Hey guys, so I have a special episode for you today. I'm here at the Perfect Edge with Howard Schechter. How you doing, Howard? Hello, how are you? Nice to see you. So, I first learned about the Perfect Edge a few months ago. I was online looking for different razor sharpening services, and the Perfect Edge was recommended to me by many different people. So I looked them up online, and lo and behold, they're just down the road from me, just a couple miles. So I gave Howard a call, and here I am. So. Howard, tell us a little bit about the Perfect Edge. Tell us about the company and different goods and services that you offer. Sure. We have been in business since 2005. Um, we've had a lot of firsts uh, in the industry here. Um, I reintroduced the Belgian stones back into America after a 60-year hiatus. And um, we still sell only select-grade Belgian codicles and Belgian blue stones. We also are the largest dealer for DMT diamond hones uh, in New England. And we sell the Shapton stones from Japan. And uh, we also sell the Norton stones, which are manufactured not too far from here. So we sell a lot of uh, very high quality stones. Um, I'm a real tool guy, so. Lots of tools down here. Lots of tools down here. It's a great guy's area down here. <laughs> and um, I, I won't sell any honing equipment that I wouldn't use on my own tools. And there are a lot of uh, mediocre stones out there and ways of getting too sharp that I wouldn't endorse, I wouldn't use. I've tried many of them. And um, it's finally come down to where I make my own straps, I manufacture my own straight razors, I quarry my own stones in Pakistan, um, and uh, try to give everybody as fair a deal as I can. I don't do very fancy razors, or at least not yet. <laughs> um, my direction is more towards every man's razor. I feel that you shouldn't have to spend four or five hundred dollars in order to get a shave. So uh, that's my perspective and uh, it's just uh, who I am and it's how I've grown my business. What's different about us in terms of honing is um, really... This is what I heard, sorry to interrupt, but where you really stood out, people mentioned that you give one of the best edges on a razor. So that's why I was recommended to you. So wh yeah, where do you stand out? What's different? Yeah, we, we get them really sharp. Um, my background is um, uh, college. I had a degree in geology. So that's where my interest in the stones, stones comes yeah. from, right? Yeah. And then uh, I got into metallurgy with my blacksmithing and then bladesmithing background. So over the years, I've learned an awful lot about heat treating, about different types of steel. And uh, one of the branches of mathematics I'm most fond of, and it's a tool I use to solve a number of problems in my life, is uh, geometry. So the way that manifests is as crystallography. And it's all about crystallography when it comes to water stones. The Belgian stones, the active ingredient is garnet. Okay. And garnet is, is what cleaves very readily into the slurry solution, and that's what cuts and polishes cool. the edge. Wow. The DMT stones are diamonds, industrial okay. diamonds, held to a very high um, quality tolerance. And um, the DMT stones are, of course, will cut anything. Diamond is the hardest. Yeah. So uh, they cut very aggressively, very rapidly, and they're uh, almost a little too much for straight razors. Yeah. But a DMT. Be careful with it. Yeah, I've been working with DMT. I've, I've worked with their R and D people, and oh, very nice. Uh, yeah, they're great, wow. great people over there, and um, very committed to mm -hmm. to sharpening. Um, and they've come up with a number of ways to, to get a really, really sharp edge that's good for the face, too. Nice. So, um, let's see, Norton, of course, is a New England company. It's in Worcester. It's right near oh, wow. the next town over. Yeah. And uh, being a global company like everybody else these days, they 
make the uh, Norton 4,000, 8,000 right. stones. Which I hear is, you know, it seems like it's put out there as kind of like the standard set that people get when you're yeah. starting to hone your it, own straights. It's a very good stone. Um, the yellow stone, I think it's the yellow 8,000 side is made in Italy. Okay. The 4,000 side is made in Mexico and they assemble them in Mexico. All right. Yeah, they used to assemble them in New Hampshire, oh. but uh, but you know how things go, right? Absolutely. But the quality is still there, and it's a great stone if it's prepared properly. And uh, they have to be lapped and they have to be chamfered because uh, no stone you know, really comes from the quarry or from a factory flat, except the DMTs, which start out flat. Yeah. But if you if you get uh, any of the popular stones, you, you, you have to flat them. them. Yeah. Got it. And, and uh, we'll get into that cool. later. I'll show you how we do that. Nice. All right. So I want to know if I was to send my straight razor to you, what would be the typical treatment it would get? I'm actually going to yeah. move in here. We'll move in a little bit closer and he can kind of show us through like what's kind of like the standard that a straight razor would get if you sent it to him for honing or resharpening. Yeah. All right. All right, so he's going to give a little rundown now of, you know, if you send in a razor to him, kind of his assessment and just kind of the basic, uh, you know, restoration that he does to a blade. Okay, so uh, this is Nick's yep. blade, and it's a Dovo Inox. Um, Inox stands for inoxidab. It's stainless, right? And it means stainless. stainless. Okay, yeah. I, didn't, I knew a little bit. <laughs> yep, I don't know, and... Um, mm -hmm. The Germans actually were the ones who invented stainless steel. Wow. It used to be called rastfrei. Oh, I've Rust seen that. Rastfrei okay. steel. I've seen that on some of like the, uh, I've been reading about straight razors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's, you know, it's just stainless steel. It's okay. a high chromium, high nickel steel. Um, of course, you know, there's whole arguments that occur whether you should go with carbon, carbon steel yeah. or stainless. And, you know, it's... Uh, preference pretty much yeah I've heard they, they preference. both have plus they both have minus yeah and so yeah I went with this as mostly I thought it was a beautiful razor oh, the olive wood beauty, scale yeah. so yeah, it's very just, pretty that's why I sold on <laughs> yeah very nice and it has that gold wash on I it, know yeah which, you know, I really like yeah um, you people have to be careful when they uh, clean these because it's it's just a few thousands thick it'll right. come right off you okay know? so just uh, people have to be careful about that but um, the first thing I do is I do an assessment of the razor, which is done with this $12 Radio Shack aluminum, illuminated microscope. This thing's amazing. He was showing me. He has Zeiss lenses here, which are German manufacturer loops up to 80 accents. But this, he says, is better for it and gives a better assessment of the blade, which is awesome because something one of us could get, you know, run down to Radio Shack yeah, well, and pick yeah. one up. Yeah, yeah, run down. You know, it's on the rack there in a little blister wrap. Right. If you had to design a microscope for straight razors, I don't think you could do better than this. It's perfect. You know, and it's small. It's less than a pack of cigarettes and bigger mm -hmm. than a Zippo lighter. Amazing. In there. So, uh, and the light comes down from above. So you can see the edge. Now, why do I do this? The reason is that if you don't look at the blade on both sides before you start doing something to it, you just don't know that what you've done to it has either changed it at all or is changing it the correct way. So um, this is the heel of the blade and this is the toe of the blade. So I put this on here and I just move the edge of the razor down the blade. And what I'm looking for here is little chips or I'm looking for parts that never got sharp. Yeah. Um, because it's not uh, a given that just because you sharpen a blade, all of the blade is sharp. Okay. And I do it on both sides. And the reason I do it on both sides is that the spine of the razor is often warped in the heat treating process. So it's a fairly thin piece of steel. And mm -hmm. when they quench it in the oil, it can, it can flex it can, a little bit? It actually warps, yeah, okay. or it can twist. Now, usually, it'll, it'll do it right here. And sometimes you'll see a hook here where the blade will come off a little bit. Okay. We're not talking much, yeah. but you'll see it in the bevel but when you enough. finish. Okay. And it can mean that 
you're not getting the edge in contact with the stone when you think you are. Got it. How's so, my blade doing? Well, your blade is doing very well. And the way I can tell that is because I'm looking at the spine and the spine is um, honed flat, which is normal. Okay. Um, evenly on that side. And pretty evenly on that side too. So you got one of the good ones. Okay, well good. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> yeah, Dovo, um, and, and it's not just Dovo, but Dovo and Thierry Zard uh, from France, Yeah. Uh, both have excellent manufacturing processes. Uh, very high uh, quality control on their blades. Uh, excellent design. Okay. And uh, to me, design is everything. Okay. Uh, so um, you'll never go wrong with a Dovo. So it's key to get everything flat to start off with. Absolutely. So, so what we do is we get the Shapton stone holder. Right. Out. I've seen that. There's a, yeah, there's a lot of stone holders out there. I've used them all, have okay. them all. Um, I like this one. It's four and a half pounds. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. it's got some weight to it. Yeah, and it's rubber. You know, yeah. it's a specially uh, formulated rubber so that when it gets onto this frosted surface, mm -hmm. it doesn't move. Okay, it has like very some tacky. like vibration. Yeah, there's it. no vibration. Oh, wow. Yeah, look at that. I mean, oh, it's rock right solid. And, and the, the pond is sitting on a granite surface plate, which is sitting on an isolation table. Well, these components I got from the quality lab at a, uh, a factory which did aerospace parts. So, as you can tell, he's, everything's got to be perfect and lined up <laughs> to get that edge. Look at that. I'm, I'm deep into this. The, the attention to detail is very impressive. Thank you. Very, very impressive. So, uh, the shaft and stones uh, are the ones I like are the glass stones. So, the first thing we do is we water down the blade. Uh, the stone. So you just water it down and um, I stand on a mat so that uh, you know you're not on concrete. Yeah. Okay. And you don't want to be wearing rings or jewelry when you do this kind of work. Um, you put the razor straight down onto the stone and I use about a 45 degree angle uh, there are lots of ways to sharp and some people go like this uh, some people go like that uh, whatever way you decide to hold the razor the one important thing to remember is that honing is a progressive process you go from coarser stones to finer stones to extra finer stones to finishing stones that means that we'll go in this sequence 1,000, 4,000, 8,000, 16,000, and then 30,000. And because the stones are white, you'll see the metal smear right. on, on the stone. That's and nice, see that, actually. Yeah, you'll yeah. see that it actually does make a difference. And um, the reason I don't go like this is because if there is any impurity in the stone, uh, you know, whether it's a natural stone like the Belgian or a Japanese, uh, or if it's a manufactured stone, uh, ceramic stone like um, the Nortons or the Naniwas, um, there could be something in the surface that you can't see, but the edge will feel it. And it'll hit that edge and it'll take a chip out of it if you're going straight on into it. If you're going like this, there's more steel thickness behind it, and it tends not to chip the blade. Oh, so very that, nice. That's just what oh, I do. That's a great tip. It. Now, the way I'm holding my body, um, I put these three fingers uh, uh, equally along the uh, edge of the blade, back from the edge. This arm, my right arm, all it's doing is going like this. Okay. And that's 60 
Wow. One, two, 60 strokes. Oh, ho, ho. And the reason it's so many is because I'm setting the bevel. Right, right, right. If you don't get the bevel set correctly, you can go out to 30,000 and the razor still won't uh, shave your face because you'll never have gotten right to the edge. Yeah. And you can see this when you look at it under the microscope, you'll see the edge and then back from the edge, you'll see a, a nicely honed piece of steel Okay. That may be out to 30,000. So that's what setting the bevel is. It's getting it right. all the way out to the edge. You're there. setting that angle. Right. So this is all steel on there. So before I switch it over, I'm just going to clean it up. Clean it off. And now I'm on the other side of the uh, blade. Okay, that's 60 strokes. Oof. And the, the interesting thing here is to look at the smear. Mm -hmm. If the smear is nice and even across the stone, yeah. then it means the edge is contacting it. Sometimes, you know, I will get a white line down the center. Okay. And that means it, the edge isn't there yet. All right, guys, so we're back here. Uh, same place, different day. Uh, we had to uh, take a little break there uh, for work. Uh, duties for both of us, but anyway, we're back here at the Shapton 4K stone. We just finished on my straight razor, the Shapton 1K, setting the bevel. So we're back here with the uh, four, and I'm gonna let Howard take over. Great. So we're using the Shapton stones. Uh, great stones. Um, they have to be taken care of. Uh, you have to flatten them between every use with this diamond glass lapping plate. Which he just did, which is a pretty cool little process there. So the stone and the um, razor meet like that. The other thing I like about the Shaptons is because they're white, you can see the smear. Now see that smear? Oof. How? Yeah. It's nice and even right yeah. across. Oh yeah. If, if the stone isn't flat, it will make the edge of the razor conform to the stone before it'll flatten the stone. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can see this on here, but the stone is like perfectly white and within the few passes there it just turned black. So you can tell that that's obviously taking off steel. And it's leaving a nice trace across the stone there, nice and even. And that was with maybe 10, 12 Oh passes. yeah, there's barely anything. If you're not ambidextrous, you will become so if you do this enough. Yeah, that's something I've really had to work on, uh, you know, using the straight razor. Really working on both hands. Okay, so I did, after we set the bevel, and the bevel's done, Yeah. I go ab about 40 strokes. Okay, because you did okay. 60 on the first one. Right. Yeah. And that was because this is a good razor. This is a nice dovo. So you don't have to really work it, yeah, in right. shape. Right. If it was um, a restoration job, something like this, um, I will examine it under microscope, both sides. Uh, I'll put it against the straight edge so I can see whether I'm dealing with a smile and, and how radius the, um, ho the toe and the heel are. And... Um, see what I have to deal with Got before it. I put it to the stone. Got it. And setting the bevel, this is an important idea. This is my understanding of it. Please correct me. But the edge of the blade is coming out like this. And if it's like this, if it's a very steep angle to the edge of the blade and you're sharpening it, you might just be sharpening down here and not the yes. point of the blade itself. Yeah. So by setting the bevel, you're increasing this angle. So when it's on the stone, you're actually getting the the fine edge of the blade in contact with the stone, so you're taking that edge down to like the finest grade possible. That's where that's where the shaving occurs. Exactly. That's my basic understanding yeah. of it. I'm still getting all into this, but uh, yeah, and 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 it's that's exactly what's happening now. The engineering team who uh, designed the razors, you know, this is the angle right yeah. here. That's pretty cool that the spine is set at that yeah. angle. That's really, really ingenious. That's uh, why these design. are much easier to sh sharpen the knives. Exactly. Like I sharpen my own knives at home and it is, uh, let them take the, <laughs> no. 
I'll go for it. But I sharpen my own knives at home, and that's like that's the hard thing is because every time you do a pass, there's nothing setting your angle like the spine of the blade. You got to get that angle right every time, and if you vary in between each pass, you're going to be varying that angle, of that edge, and so yes. it's going to be much harder to get an edge. So that in that yeah. way, this is easier. <laughs> and geometrically, there's a big difference as well. Um, the example I like to use is a woodworker's plane iron and the angle is very critical so that when the plane goes across the wood it bites into the wood at a very specific angle and takes the the curl up with, at a certain angle at a certain angle now with the straight razors it's this angle between that's form between the spine and the edge and that angle is what will get under the the stubble and lift it up and cut it off got it if it's rounded and i do a lot of restoration work um, or repair work from uh, blades that have been improperly honed i'll look under uh, the microscope uh, at the edge of the blade and sometimes i'll see a double bevel Okay. Or sometimes I'll even see a rounded bevel like that, and oh. that won't shave. Got it, got it. No, that makes sense. That's the kind of razor where you have to push through to shave, Yeah. and that's when you slice off a piece of your face. Yeah. That's something I've been really impressed with uh, straight razors, is that they don't want to cut you. They're so well engineered. Like, yeah. if you're using them correctly, it, it wants to shave. It doesn't want to cut your skin, but yeah. you got to use it correctly, though, still. And that's yeah. A, that's a, <laughs> yeah. That being said, I've cut myself a bunch, but... Um, okay, All so right. we did both sides of this on the 4000. I just want to take a look at it, see what we've got. Okay, and this is looking good. Um, and what the reason I'm saying that is because what I'm seeing is the bevel is starting to turn dark gray, which means that the scratches on the bevel some of them are starting to become thinner than a wavelength of light. So the light uh, from here is going in, but it's not coming out. Got it. No, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. And also at the edge of the blade, what I'm seeing is what I call a feather. And it's just little pieces of steel that are on the uh, edge of the blade. Okay. And when you see that um, feathering going from heel to toe, then you know you've you've done the whole blade. Got it. Very and, nice. And I just want to do a little bit more on this because towards the front here I wasn't seeing that. And the smear is telling me that I'm getting it now. really nice you check yourself along the way at each step you know before you progress to the next step that's just so important you know if you don't you can get all the way out to 30,000 grit and and try and shave and nothing will happen yeah that's what I've realized sharpening my own knives at home one time I didn't have the bevel set and you know I went out all the way and it was dull yeah and I'd gone out all the way to you know and you I've, just wasted a half hour you just wasted yeah. so much time Wipe it off with a finger, never with paper towel or something, because you get. So then you'll get the fibers saying. in there. Wow. All right, so we're working down the Shapton line here. Now we're at the Shapton yeah. 8K or 8,000 grit yep, stone. 8,000 grit. Yeah. 1.84 microns. Cool. Wow. And you can see how at the higher grit, we're not getting as much steel off. Yeah, it's, before it was a much darker black on there, and now it's a lighter gray. We're refining that bevel. Very nice. And, and as I'm watching the smear, as I do this, I'm moving my fingers, and I'm exerting a little bit more pressure. And the reason for that is 
almost every razor I've ever worked on has had a twist in it due to the heat treating and the stresses in the metal. Okay. So it, that's on the spine, so the edge tracks the spine. Got it. So you have to adjust to that yeah. the little uh, twirl or spiral in the spine. Yeah. So at this point, could you shave off an 8K stone, an 8,000 grit stone? This is an 8. Let's see what it does. So... Yeah, not, not too well. Yeah. So, a little bit. You could take off yeah. some hairs, but... You could take off some hairs. And, yeah. a, and a lot of guys stop here. Okay. I don't like stopping there. Um, so it's well, actually, there. you know what I just did? I lifted it up off my skin, and it popped the hair. Oh, it popped them. Yeah. yeah. The scratches are getting finer, and so the uh, bevel is getting darker. So that was the eight thousand. So now we're getting really, really fine. Yeah, this is the sixteen thousand. Can I give that? Feel? Wow, that just yeah. feels it's just smooth. smooth. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it could be a tile in your house, you know. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it'd feel slick. <laughs> yeah, and you notice this is getting down to 0 0.92 microns. Okay, the previous one was 1.84. So that's exactly half. half. So that, you know, you go up in grit times two, the micron divided by two. Yeah. Yeah. See the smear coming? Oh yeah. It's nice. It's very nice. It's again lighter. See how nice and even that is? Yeah. And I'm going fast here. I don't recommend you start doing that at yeah. home. <laughs> Just, you know, do it and feel the stone. Get the feedback. Do it right. Yeah. Yeah. And and get your angle consistent. Um, this arm is just going like this. This one is feeling the stone f through the razor, so that it's always in contact with the stone. This smear is beautiful. It's perfect. Yeah. And it's not, um, you know, if, if you do 44 on one side and you do 38 on another side, it's not going to matter. I mean, it's not something you have to be absolutely perfect about. Okay. You do want to get them in the general area. Right. Okay. This is looking good. Now the big boy. Now this is the 30, so the feel 30. that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's just I mean, sick it's, flat. I mean, I, I can't feel barely any sort of grit on there. It just you, feels, it feels smooth. You wouldn't think it would cut any steel exactly. at all. You know, but um, now wow. we're talking Point. 0.49 microns. But just, you know, to reiterate for people, um, a micron is a millionth of a meter. <laughs> so, okay, so a meter is about three yeah, feet. Yeah, three feet, okay. so... A millionth of three a millionth feet. Of three feet. And so, this is less than half that. So, I mean, for me, that just becomes unimaginably small. Yeah. You know, so I'm, I can't fathom it. It's no, small. It, it's, yeah, it's, it's really small. It's the smallest, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, you see what it is after 25? There's just a, the, the lightest gray right. tinge in the slurry there. Okay. So now we come to the part that everybody gasps at. <laughs> I've just taken this bevel, this beautifully and laboriously produced bevel, down to 30,000. And what I'm going to do 
is drag it along oh, the shoulder <laughs> of the stone. <laughs> I know. That seems so counterintuitive. It, like, I mean, that's... Yes. That, you know, taking the, the edge against a cutting surface is like... Would be, would be removing the edge. Yes. And in this case, what it's doing is moving that flash that's formed at the end and, and taking it down to solid steel. So as you're taking off steel on both sides, at the end you're getting that part of the steel that you've, like, that you've honed off, right? Yeah. You're getting, it's like the excess there, you know? Yeah. And so you're it just... It looks like fingers. Yeah, so you're just taking that and removing it. Yes. Okay. And then I'm doing one, two, three, four. Okay. And that takes anything back. And now we're taking cold slurry water here. Yeah. Okay, not what you would use this on your face at all. This is not a shaving all. slick yeah. lather. And just... Nice. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you guys can see this. It just completely shaved his entire forearm right there where he ran it. Jeez. Much different. I mean, that was a difference from the 8K to the 30K stone. Yeah. It would. It was not performing like that at all. Yeah. Wow. And so you can see why I, I go out to 30K. Yeah. It's a lot more labor. Yeah. Um. But, you know. And this may have looked somewhat easy here on this video, but this yeah. is years and years and years of experience and you know he's got the angle down and all that stuff yeah. i can tell you for me sharpening a knife it takes me a long time and you know i've i've played around on some you know on some flat stones before and it's hard you know getting that angle doing it it's not as easy as it appears here yeah. just because of your level of experience yeah well you know when you're doing 10 of these a day wow five six days a week over 10 years you're going to get good. Yeah, yeah. Or you're going to get a lot of angry people. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. That's true. All right. All right. So the we next check thing out I the, do. Uh, oh, yeah. So what do you do next? Let's. Yeah, we could check it out under here and, and see what's actually going on. And the edge is almost black. It's hard, actually, to see the edge of the um, blade uh, against, and I'll show it to you so you can see it. Yeah, take a look God. in there. Oh yeah, the edge. So you can see the uh, the bevel. The bevel come up and then it just goes. It's black out to the yeah. edge. Yeah. The, and then do you have to check both sides of the blade? I always do, okay. and I recommend because it's amazing. One side can look great, and the other side I'm like, look, was this ever on yeah. a hone? You know. And it's amazing. Just right there in the edge, I saw it was beautiful it was it was perfect and it was uniform the entire length there that i saw it was completely wow it, i wish you guys could see us if i tried to <laughs> film it but it's it's perfect it's the same uh the same width of the bevel the edge it yeah. looks consistent the edge of the blade itself the very tip edge there's no like inconsistencies or wave it's just flat and and part of that has to do with you've got a very good razor here Okay. Okay, and well, I like Dovo. Well, I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> and, and part of the reason that I know that is take a look at the spine, that the wear on the spine. Yeah. We're getting even wear from the heel to the oh, toe. Oh, so that means that there's not much twisting no. in there. If, this is. Uh, do you find that consistent with Dovo razors? Because this is a more premium yeah. one of theirs. Yeah, Dovo has very good um, uh, quality uh, control. Um, very good machining processes. They, their metallurgy is very good. Okay. Um, I've seen uh, a lot of chatter on the um, uh, forums about Dovo's being hard to uh, hone pr correctly. And this is a Dovo. This is a stainless steel blade, by the way. They have they have stainless and carbon. So anyway, yeah. but you've heard they're hard to hone. People are saying. Yeah, yeah people say they're hard to hone. Um, I have not had a problem like that with okay. them. Okay. Um, I've never had a Dovo person send them back to me or, you know, yeah. email me with a complaint. Okay. Uh, it's, it's just a very, very good razor. Good. And, uh, they make them nicely. I mean, you can look at the, the pivot. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the, the end of that is just really nicely done. Nothing's hanging up. Yeah. The I mean, finger goes over it. There's nothing, you know, yeah, I catching. really like this. I think it's beautiful. The olive wood scales. Yeah. That's, you know, yeah. at some point once you 
pick a razor, you know, there's just, you want to get something that looks good, so you're happy to use yep. it. And this one really caught my eye. So at this point, what do you do now? Is this shave ready? Do you do something next? Yeah, I oil it. You oil it, okay. Yeah. <laughs> now, do you strop it? What, first of all, what type of oil is this? This is camellia oil. Camellia it's, oil. Uh, actually medical grade. Okay. I buy it by the gallon from Japan. Okay. Um, if it goes on your skin, no problem. Okay. Um, in fact, Asian women's skin, this is one of the secrets of their, the beauty of their skin. Okay. Um, and if you cut your face, it will, and any of this gets in, it starts to heal. Okay. Instead of like mineral so, oil yeah, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, something, you know? yeah, petroleum based. Uh, yeah. Camellia, this is uh, vegetable based. Yeah, it's correct? from a camellia yeah. tree. Okay. Yeah. And then I put a drop here. And, and this is a real thing with me about the pivot points. No, Every razor I get, it's always rust inside there, even if it's stainless. Okay. Okay. So I just, you got to be careful when you're doing this. Yeah. Do not go up <laughs> and then down. you got to be careful. You know, the way he's handling these blades here, you guys have seen my videos, I handle them a lot more uh, Delicately, because I'm not as comfortable yet wielding a safety razor like this. <laughs> yeah, I have a very big first aid kit too. <laughs> oh, that's fair. <laughs> now you see the jimping in here. Yeah, so the jimping is these little, uh, the little um, striations. striations in here, waves, so, so you get grip with your fingers yeah. in there. They're also a place where rust can get introduced. Okay. Because it's a discontinuous surface in in the um, jimping area. Uh, the metallurgy, the grain boundaries protrude more or okay. are more susceptible and, and I'll see usually a lot of uh, rusting in there. So I do jimping, you know, if people want uh, their blades jimped, but what I do is I do the minimal possible. So where the finger is right here. Mm -hmm. That's where I do the jimping. I don't take it all the way back. Got the it. more jimping, the more possibility of uh, even cracking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you get that, do the end, do the top. It gets off any uh, slurry that may have gotten onto the stone. Then you hold it like this, work the oil back and forth into the pivot point. Okay. Now I looked up at the light at this uh, Dovo and in between the scales and the uh, tang of the blade, they put bearings in. Okay. Okay, so the wood is actually not touching oh, yeah. this, the uh, tang of the blade. Yeah, there's little like washers in between yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, wa exactly what yeah. they are is washers. And, and that's what I'm lubricating right now. Got it. So that you never have a problem. Just wipe it off. The excess goes on the wood because wood's a living thing. You gotta take care of wood products or night. Whether you have a cutting board, you know, some sort of outdoor wood product, anything, it, they need to be oiled. Because the oil goes in there, it soaks it in, and look at it, it brings out the grain and the wood and the color. This thing, it just, the beauty of this blade just, you know, pops. imminently just, yeah. you know, jumps up the yeah. scales. Wow. And there you have a perfect edge. Amazing, wow. <laughs> I am, I'm really excited to go home and use this thing. Yeah.